and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video we are going to be unboxing and taking a look at the Windsor & Newton Cotman Watercolor Field Pocket Set. <laughs> that was a mouthful. So I am a collector of watercolor travel sets. Windsor & Newton has a lot of pocket sets, but this one in particular interested me because it has a little canteen that you can carry water with you. So this is like an all-in-one complete travel kit. Another thing I want to mention is that this can be a little confusing, but Windsor & Newton also has this pocket set with the same design, except it contains their professional watercolors. Now the Cotman set is gonna be considerably cheaper than the one with the professional watercolors in it. I wish they sold this set just as the pocket set itself with no paint at all, because honestly, I think they would get a lot more sales. So if you flip the package over, you will notice the 12 colors that are in this Cotman watercolor set. It has the names of each color and the pigment information right there, which is very handy. You will notice that a lot of these colors have the word hue in them. These Cotman watercolors that have the word hue after them are often made with cheaper pigments and are not as light fast or high of quality as the professional sets, just so you are aware. And the difference between these colors and the ones included in the professional set is that they are the professional grade colors, so they do not have hue in the name. They also do not have a purple in their set or the Chinese white. They have a yellow ochre and a ivory black. Now, enough of all the technical stuff. Let's just get this open and take a look, right? So here it is. It fits probably in the length of my hand, though it is quite chunky. The case has their Windsor & Newton logo on the front and a thumb clip on the back, which I actually did not know about. So you can hold it in your hand easier when you are painting. Now, just for comparisons, I want to pull out my portable painter. I have a whole review and filling up my portable painter in another video. If you're interested, I will link it above. But it is slightly taller and wider. However, the portable painter is thinner. So the way you open this pocket set is you slide off the top. And this will be your water container. And then you open it up like a book. Then this flap comes out like this and the side flap comes out to the side. Now this water container has a little tiny divot over here for you to slide on this plastic piece that sticks out. So it sits like that and it, it doesn't fall off. That's quite sturdy, which is surprising. So even shaking it, it doesn't come off. These plastic side pallets feel a little flimsy um, I'm not a fan of how they have it cut out in such an odd place, but I understand that they have to make it this way so that way it also fits into the water canteen. Now with this fully open, it gives you three mixing places. So here is your tiny travel brush. And when I mean tiny, it is very tiny. You pull it out and put it in the other side. And here is your little travel water brush. This is a number two round I have out of a Christy Rice brush set. And comparing the brush tips, it looks like the travel brush for Windsor & Newton is about the size of a number two round. Let me pull the brush for the portable painter for comparison. So here is the Windsor Newton brush compared with the portable painter brush, which is actually double-sided. So the smaller end of the portable painter brush is the same, which is about a number two, 
And then the larger side of the portable painter brush is probably between a four and a five. So I really like that the portable painter gives you two brush ends because it is more versatile. This number two is quite tiny and I'd probably take other travel brushes with me, but I guess it's a brush and it would work in a pinch if that's all you could take with you. Now you do have to put it back in the set with the black part up because it needs this little divot in order to click in the spot here. But moving on to our canteen, which pops out. And I guess you could also use this as a mixing space if you really wanted, though being a dark blue color, it would be very hard to see your colors. Here is your little water canteen and the lid just pops off. It's quite difficult to get off, which I guess is good so that it holds the water well, but it's just a little plug. There's no screwing with the component. It is just a pop in, pop out. So I filled this water canteen up to the top to see how much water it holds and I poured it all into the water container and it fills it up about halfway, just for some reference. Now in this set, they also include a sponge to wipe off your brush or use as texture. I often use this when doing trees or shrub, plain air. Now on to the colors that are individually wrapped. And this is something that I don't see a lot of reviewers mention or talk about, but this center line holds in all the paint and you can pop it out. So what you actually have to do is push the little plastic piece towards the paint and lift up. And this brings out the center tray of paints, which allows you easy access to the other sides. So let's go ahead and take all these paints out now so we can take a look at them. Okay, so here we have one of the individual paint pans. You obviously have the Windsor & Newton logo saying it is the Cotman watercolors and it is series one. Here is the color name of Cerulean Blue. And then on the side, it has its permanence rating, pigment number, and light fastness rating. So I will probably unwrap all these pans and keep the little tag for a separate swatch sheet. So here it is unwrapped from its packaging. So you can see on the one side of the half pan, there is the name of the paint. However, there is all this other stuff that I wish they didn't include because I'm not sure what it means and if they would have just included the name and the pigment number, that would have been best. I can also take a Sharpie and then just put the pigment number on another side of the half pan. Also be very careful, but the paint just falls out of these half pans. So probably as you use them, they will get more stuck into the pan. Here they are all unwrapped. Now let's swatch out these colors and see what they look like. And we're gonna be doing this in my DIY watercolor sketchbook. I have a video tutorial of how to make this here on my channel, which I will link above for you if you're interested in making one for yourself. So I already did a little bit of a layout of what I'm thinking of doing. So there are 12 colors in the pocket set. So this is a nine by 12 opened up. So I did 12 boxes across the top and that's what I will swatch out each individual color for. But the bottom here is where I will do all my mixes so you can get an idea of the color combinations you can get with this set. All right, so I think I'm gonna test out using this brush um, just for a little bit and then I'll probably switch to a bigger brush because this will just take <laughs> quite a long time. So let's see how they re-wet, first of all. I'm gonna start with the lemon yellow hue and see how they re-wet. And there is a little bit of wiggle room in there that I don't like to hear, but it re-wets all right. Yeah, this, this brush is very tiny and I will not be using it for very long. 
but like I said, it's something to have when you're on the go and if you don't have a lot of space to carry other brushes with you. I also think I'm going to spray the other paints because it could use a little help with the activation. I'm going to use my little mini mister to spray the paints to help them activate a little better to complete these swatches. And you can easily find these in a craft store or even the dollar store, but I will leave this one linked below if you're interested in picking this one up. I like this one in particular because it's very small and compact. And we're gonna switch to a number five brush. I also have a bigger jar of water here because we're going to be doing a lot of painting and this little cup is just not going to suffice for all this. I'm going to skip colors as I go so that it gives time for the other one to dry so they don't bleed into each other. I'm also wetting each of the areas so that way I get somewhat of a smoother gradient when laying down these colors. Now there's a couple things I want to make note of uh, about this set of colors is one thing that I really liked was that they included a Payne's gray. There are so many times that they include a straight black which I don't like. A straight black is very flat in watercolor paintings and this one in particular is made up of three pigments, one of them being PB29 which is ultramarine blue and granulating which makes it a really lovely color when you lay it down if you can see how it dried and you can kind of get the pigment, the blue pigment separate a little bit, which I think is really pretty in my opinion. I know some people don't like granulating watercolors. I noticed a majority of these colors are not very pigmented, which I guess can be expected with the Cotman set being student grade. I had somewhat of a hard time laying down sap green and cerulean blue hue specifically, no matter how much paint I used, especially when mixed together the color was so thin. Same with the Chinese white that I painted over a stripe of Pigra Micron. If you aren't familiar, generally you do not use white in watercolor because you would paint around or mask out highlights and if you wanted a lighter version of a color, you would just water it down. Also, many people carry white gel pens or paint markers if bright white highlights are wanted after painting. Now on to mixing the primary colors in this set, I found you get a nice range of oranges and greens, but is lacking a little with purple mixes. Having the cadmium red hue that is more orange leaning so it neutralizes out the blue, this can be good for painting shadows or if you like a more muted palette, so I'm glad they included the dioxazine purple to balance this out. I also found myself using the thumb ring on the back of the palette to hold when I started painting, so I actually found that pretty useful and was glad that it was included. Other than the brush and maybe spraying the paints to help them re-wet better, I think overall this is a pretty good beginner set, especially for the price. Currently at this time of filming it is under $30 and I don't think you can beat that. Here is my spread all finished and I'm actually really happy with how I put the Windsor & Newton logo and field pocket set in the middle. But here they are all dried. So I put the pigment numbers inside the color and then the names underneath and I also labeled if they were cool and warm. So that way when you come down here to look at these colors, you'll know which cool yellow and cool red and cool blue and warm blue that I use to mix these colors down here at the bottom. Now I think this is a great starter set, especially if you want to play around with mixing colors and color theory so that way you can get a wide variety of different colors and, and understand that better. Worst case scenario is you don't enjoy the paint, you take the paint out, and then you can fill it with your own paint. And if you have a professional grade paint, you can use that as well. So the palette's pretty customizable. And for that, I really recommend it. Again, if you are interested in picking up this set, I will have it linked in the description below. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.